Hello and welcome to this ACCA video. If you're studying for the ACCA Strategic Business Leader exam, this video is aimed at you. My name is Sean Purcell and I have years of experience in helping students pass their ACCA exams. In this video, we're going to debrief question 4 and there are other videos in the series which will debrief the remaining questions. The aim of these videos is to give you some practical tips on how you might approach strategic business leader questions so as to gain exam confidence and maximize your success when attempting the real exam. Before we start looking at the question, I'm assuming you've attempted it and have a copy of the exam question to hand. Question four asks you to prepare two presentation slides together with notes for the chief executive who's gonna present them to the board. Before we get involved in the details of the question, there's a set of six practical steps that I think we should follow on every strategic business leader question. They are, what role are you asked to play? What format is the answer required in? Who are we addressing, i.e. who's our audience? What verb is being used? What's it asking us to do? How many marks are being awarded? And what are the professional skills marks being awarded for? If we always ensure we ask these six questions before developing our answer plan, the chances of getting something wrong will be minimized. Let's now look in more detail at the question and see how we can deal with the requirements. Let's look at the question in more detail now then. We can see that we're supposed to produce two slides with accompanying notes for the chief executive who's going to present to the board. So slightly convoluted requirement but you're the chief you're giving notes to the chief executive he's going to present them to the board there's two of them and in each slide the first one the verb we're talking about discuss the benefits and costs of investing in big data and the second one asks us to evaluate the possible opportunity of undertaking uh, long-term infrastructure management of roads in the three countries there's eight marks awarded with two professional skills marks for communication skills. So as always, when we look at a question, let's take the six steps. So what's my role? My role is I'm a consultant. The format required are two presentational slides. I'm producing these for the CEO who's going to present them to the board. And the verbs are about discussing benefits and costs for slide one and evaluating the opportunity for slide two. I'm gonna get a total of eight marks. There are two slides, so we break that into four by two. They're technical marks. Professional skills marks are for communication skills. I'm gonna go into a bit more detail in a moment on this, but when professional skills marks are awarded for communication skills, it's very important that we observe the format because if you fail to follow the format, you will not get any professional skills marks. I also think I would always think about time. Um, I think you need to, if you haven't already, look at the examining guidance article on the ACCA website, uh, which is over your shoulder, and it breaks down the exam into minutes per mark. And it comes up with a formula for two and a half minutes per mark, and if we look at the situation here, we've got eight technical marks. Two and a half minutes will give us 20 minutes. If you read that article, you'll see that actually there's no time required to acquire professional skills marks. So if I've got 20 minutes in total, I'm going to split the answer in half. 10 minutes for slide one and 10 minutes for slide two. And the other tip I would say, just to make sure that we don't deviate from this time, is I would actually write down start and finish for each slide. Physically write down the time and make sure I stick to it. One of the main reasons students often don't do well in the exam is they don't answer all the requirements and therefore don't get the opportunity to get all the marks they potentially could. So that's where we start. The other thing that we also should always start with is looking at the professional skills marks. So professional skills marks here are for communication. Again, there is quite detailed help you can find off the ACCA's website on this, but very uh, kind of briefly, we need to inform, 
persuade and clarify. Try and remember those headings and if we do that we'll be absolutely fine. So what we want to do, I think this is a good way of describing it, use these professional skills marks as the lens through which we develop the technical marks. So we need to make sure when thinking about our answer to gain technical marks, are we informing, persuading and clarifying what we're saying? Are we simplifying things down to make them um, less complex? Okay, so quick reminder, eight technical marks, two slides, four and four, ten minutes each one. So if I look at slide one, I'm keeping that verb ringing in my brain. The verb's asking me to discuss benefits and costs. Now, be very careful here that we talk about big data in context. A bad answer would just talk about big data, and it would just go on about a generic overview of big data, talking about volume, velocity, variety. It would get zero marks. Here we need to talk about big data in the context of helping road and traffic. So if I was to do a brief brainstorm of what that might be in terms of how big data is going to help, um, it's going to give us more reliable forecasts on delays. It's going to help us understand when roads need maintenance. And then in terms of costs, I would be thinking about setup costs and I'd be thinking about analysis costs. How many marks was I looking for here? Well, I was looking for about four maximum. And if I think about those points, that would be more than enough. How would I expect that to look in an exam? Well, slide one would we'll take a format something like this, dealing with the requirements of benefits, a couple of points under benefits, dealing with the requirements of costs, talking about setup costs and analysis costs, and then we need to do some brief notes linking to each of these. So it's always important when we do a summary that these points on our slide link down to a note down here. So we would simply repeat one for better understanding and then we'd have one subheaded costs talk about setup costs and talk about what that might be and then we would discuss what the analysis costs would be and if we did that that's maximum marks i mean don't forget we don't need maximum marks but it, it's amazing how students don't look at these questions from the perspective of you know we need to get four marks how are we going to get them what do i need to do and if we'd done that and we'd followed that through for the other notes, we would have got four out of four. Let's have a look at slide two. On slide two, we were um, asked to evaluate. So when we see the word evaluate, you should be straight away thinking, well, what does evaluate mean? And evaluate to me means what is good and what is bad. Yep. So we're evaluating the opportunity to undertake long-term infrastructure management. Now, again, what, what is meant by long-term infrastructure management? Well, had you been looking at Exhibit 6, you would know exactly what is meant by this. Poor answers would not have included reference to what was mentioned in Exhibit 6. Um, but if we were to get involved in long-term infrastructure management the kind of uh, good things that would come out of it would be it would be a new business opportunity and also give us an opportunity for geographic expansion. What might not be so great? Well, costs would be hard to predict because they're probably uh, the result of, you know, the volume of traffic. And also, if there was any change politically, the policy on how such things was funded would also potentially change. So there's four points. I would do the same thing as I did on slide one. I would talk about each one in a brief bullet point, as we would do on a slide. And then I would take each one and I would develop that into a subheaded note. If we were to do that, four marks for slide one, four marks for slide two, that would get us maximum marks. But again, I want to stress that maximum marks are not our aim. We want to get at least half marks. To ensure that we get that on every question, we need to manage our time. So we should, if we were doing this in the real exam, be checking our watches to make sure our start and finish are on schedule and do that. And we would have no problem in getting a very good pass mark for this question. In conclusion, let's reflect on the key things we needed to get right on this question. 
Firstly, professional skills marks were for communication skills. And if we got the format wrong of a slide, we would lose all of those professional skills marks. So especially important to check the format when communication professional skills are being awarded. If you just listed a load of information about big data, for example, talking about volume and velocity and so on, your answer wouldn't have got any marks. And we just need to remember that our answers must be given in the context of the case. Your knowledge is irrelevant unless it's applied to the exhibits. And then finally, careful time management and mark focus is always relevant so as to assure we're as efficient as possible. And on this question, we should have been spending half our time on each slide. This is a one of a series of question debriefs. You'll find lots of other fantastic resources to help you with your strategic business leader preparation at accaglobal.com. Have a look at the examiner's report and the examiner's answer. However, also remember that the examiner's answer is there for tutorial purposes and is much more than would be expected from students in the actual exam. It's also worth looking at the article on the 10 things to learn from the SBL's September sitting. I hope you found this debrief useful and I'd like to wish you all the very best of luck in your future studies.